28. We're going to be talking about how to solve more equations containing trig functions in them today. Let's go ahead and get started with this equation here. Uh, I only have a few problems for us today. They're just going to be very long problems. So just be sure you're uh, taking notes on these. If you want to pause the video and try them first, go ahead and do that. All right, here we go. So uh, we're given a hint here that factoring is going to be the key to solving this. And if I'm going to be factoring, then I better set one of these sides equal to zero. So let's subtract two from both sides. One plus four cosine theta plus four cosine squared theta equals zero. All right, now can I factor this? I'm going to kind of rearrange this in my head and bring the four cosine squared in front and the one to the end. So it's more like a quadratic form. And I'm going to see if I can factor it by using two cosine theta in the first spot of two factors. Uh, I think if I just put a plus one after each of these, then I'll get my four cosine squared back. I'll get a two cosine and then another two cosine, then I'll add to be a four cosine, and then I'll get a plus one. All right, zero product properties that these both equal to zero, but they're the same, so I can just set one of them equal to zero. Two cosine theta plus one equals zero. And now solve for theta. So subtract one from both sides. Two cosine theta equals negative one. Divide both sides by two. Cosine of theta equals negative one half. Now I'm going to try to draw this triangle into the coordinate plane. So cosine always gives us the ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse. Since this is already a fraction, we label the top of that fraction adjacent to bottom hypotenuse. So for the adjacent to be negative one, then we got to come negative one this direction from our origin. Then with a hypotenuse of two, we can either go up to make a right triangle like this, or we can go down to make this right triangle. All right, uh, so the adjacent there is negative one, the hypotenuse is two. Uh, this looks like our one, two, and the square root of three triangle, so I'll label the side square root of three. This over here is negative square root of three because it's coming down. But that is our 30, 60, 90 triangle, so this interior angle is 60, so out here is 120. <coughs> hey, excuse me, or two pi over three. And then this angle, if we go another pi over three, four pi over three to get here. So all the way around to there is four pi over three. All right, now let's be sure we write our answer the right way. So theta here can be equal to either two pi over three or four pi over three. And both of those, we can get back to that terminal side by adding multiples of 2 pi n. So this plus 2 pi n is something you can put at the end of almost any problem, except for tangent when it's just plus pi n, and you only have one answer. All right, then we better say that n is an element of the integers. All right, and we've solved that one there. Goal for today is to continue practicing solving trig when there are operations in the variable. Uh, this is going to allow us to practice skills from multiple units. We already saw some quadratics. Uh, and by the end of this, we really should be able to solve all types of algebraic equations. There's really nothing I can throw at you anymore that you wouldn't know how to solve. We've seen every operation possible within an equation. All right. Here is another very tricky one. Go ahead, copy down. How would you start on this one? 
All right, I think an obvious first move is just subtract the cosecant of x from both sides. Maybe that's not super obvious, but now that you see it, that does make our lives a lot easier. Uh, next up, we've got cotangent and cosecant. I'd like them to all be the same um, trig function, or at least be similar, so that some factoring is possible. So I'm going to turn that cotangent using a quotient identity into cosine over sine. So this is now 2 cosine of x over sine of x equals negative root 2. Uh, and I'm going to do a reciprocal identity on this. So actually, let me turn this into a little bit more of a fraction. So reciprocal identity. Cosecant is 1 over sine, so this is going to become negative root 2 all over sine of x. And I see some more canceling that can happen. I multiply sine of x to both sides, and these cancel as well. Now I've just got 2 cosine of x equals negative square root of 2. Divide both sides by 2. Cosine of x equals negative root 2 over 2. Label that. So cosine always gives us adjacent over hypotenuse. Let's see if we can draw in this triangle. So the adjacent has to be um, negative root 2. So this length right here has to be negative root 2. It's going to be to the left because it's negative. Hypotenuse of 2, make a very similar picture of the last one, just different numbers. And then this side length over here has to be then root 2 and negative root 2. We recognize that as our 45 degree triangle for pi over 4, meaning this is 3 pi over 4 to get to there. And that right there is. 5 pi over 4. All right, now we got to be careful we write our answer. x equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n or 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. All right. Um, got another one here but I kind of want to just take a second to point something out about when we have here I'll start with sine when we have sine of some angle theta equals x the picture that we're going to draw for that because it's got the same uh, opposite it's other always gonna look like this or like this you'll never get you know, a triangle in quadrants one and three that solves this. If the x is positive, it looks like this. If the x is negative, it looks like this. All right, when we solve cosine of theta equals some x, the pictures that we draw always look like either like this or like this. This is when it's positive, this is when it's negative. And then when we've got tangent of theta equals some x, pictures that we draw always have the triangles in opposite quadrants, but this line in the middle, this diagonal is straight. So it either looks like this when it's positive or this when it's negative. Okay. Um, it, yeah, I think maybe having this in your notes might help you with some of this, the inverse tree problems. Let's go back to this one here. We have our final problem. Negative one third equals one third tangent of two theta plus five pi over six. So what we need to do is isolate this tangent, solve, but then we're not gonna be done. We gotta keep going with getting rid of these operations, the five pi over six and the two. And this here gives us the hint that we should work in radians. All right, that's a very radian looking measure. Uh, so we're gonna multiply three to both sides. Negative one equals the tangent 
of 2 theta plus 5 pi over 6. I'm going to turn this negative 1 into a negative 1 over 1 so that I can label it as the opposite over the adjacent. So we're going to toa um, tangent of some of anything, even this big thing, is still going to be the opposite of our adjacent. All right, where can I draw an opposite of negative 1 and an adjacent of 1? So an adjacent of 1 and an opposite of negative 1. As it is right there, I'd be coming over like this and then down. So that would be a 1 and that would be a negative 1. So adjacent is positive 1, opposite is negative 1. But I can flip this around. This here is equivalent to 1 over negative 1 which now the adjacent is negative one. I'm coming over this way and the opposite is one. So I can make this triangle as well, negative one, one. These are both uh, 45, 45, 90 triangles. So the angle measurements are three pi over four and seven pi over four. But this is one thing about tangent is that these will always be pi units apart. So we can just focus on that first answer, the three pi over four. So this here, the two theta plus five pi over six is equal to three pi over four plus pi n. Now let's get theta by itself. And it's plus pi n because it's tangent. These are always pi units apart. Okay, uh, so let's subtract 5 pi over 6 from both sides. Um, I'm going to use my calculator to do a little shortcut here. So 3 fourths minus 5 sixths. I'm going to hit math, enter, enter, turn that back to a fraction because that's negative 1 twelfth. So now I've got. 2 theta equals negative pi over 12 plus pi n. And I'm going to divide everything by 2. Or you can think of it as multiplied by 1 half. So theta equals negative pi over 24 plus pi n over 2. And hopefully somewhere on our paper is still our definition of n. n is an element of the integers. Uh, okay. And then, you know, it could be worthwhile to... Well, this one we didn't use any tree identities. I'm just thinking actually back to this one. Look at your answer and make sure that it's not going to hit at any value that makes us divide by zero at any step. It doesn't look like that's going to be the case here. Um... All right. Yep, let's call that good. And have a good rest of your day.